When you want to elevate your skillet up out of the fire so you don't burn your food, a three-legged skillet or a spider is a handy way to do that. To make our skillet, I ordered some pre-cut skillet blanks from Roy and Jessica over at Christ Centered Ironworks. And I bought a set of three blanks. There's a 12-inch blank, a 10-inch blank, and an 8-inch blank. I think today I'm going to go ahead and work with the 12-inch one, which is way too big to fit in the gas forge. So we're going to have to heat it in the coal forge. But it will probably take a little bit of extra effort to get this hot. I'm actually going to work with charcoal today because I want a nice big fire and burning that much coal in here, my chimney probably won't keep up with it and it'll really smoke this shop up. I've got it a little bit smoked up now, but I've got lots of ventilation under the eaves. I've got all the doors open. This is a lot to get hot and you can't just put it down in the fire because it'll tear your fire apart and completely block the draft. So you need a nice big fire and this just has to sit up on top. Even though I would like to make my own charcoal, I usually don't have time. This is just store-bought charcoal from the local home center. I have a few bags of this stuff. It's not real cheap to buy it this way, but it is convenient. I've also built a little fire brick wall around the fire pot so I can get a really nice deep fire without having the charcoal spill all over the place. And to form this, I'm going to work over that same oxygen cylinder base that I've used for other similar projects in the past. I'm going to let this be a domed bottom for the time being, and we'll flatten it later. A piece of hot sheet metal this big puts a lot of radiant heat out. The hot mill gloves are barely enough to keep my hands cool enough to forge. The long-handled hammer certainly helps so my hands are further away and never cross over the skillet pan while you're working. Always work at the near edge and turn it to work on it but my apron is getting so hot, I can't hardly even touch it. It's a good thing this takes a while to heat up in the charcoal fire. That gives my apron and my gloves time to cool off. This is the reason I generally don't make things like this. They're really impractical in my shop. If I had a really big gas forge with a door big enough to put this sheet in, that's the way I do it, get it done a lot faster. I'd probably also make dies for the power hammer or the fly press so that I could do it that way and it would only take a few heats to get this shaped. But I'm not going to give up on it. We're going to get it hot again, we're going to take it back, and it may take a few hours of going back and forth like this. In my time, I'm not going to make you watch all of that. Well, this is certainly getting there. We can make a skillet out of it as it is, it would work. But I think I'm gonna try and go for a little bit more refined shape. Well, this thing is really going through the charcoal. I've almost finished a second bag of it. They're 18 pound bags. So this is probably not an economical way to do this. I'm gonna keep going because it does work. And this is the biggest fire I've ever been able to get in there and actually get this whole thing hot. It is heating up a lot faster than it was when we started. It got a nice, good fire going. And this thing doesn't have any cold spots anymore.
Hopefully this is deep enough and I won't have to open another bag of charcoal. So the next heat, we're going to go ahead and start flattening this. That's getting hot. Now I know you think I look hot, but try to control yourselves. But seriously, I am just sweltering. I don't think it's really that hot in the shop. What does it say? It says it's about 90, so it's not too bad in here. But standing next to this fire and this piece of sheet metal giving off so much radiant heat, I'm ready to take a break. So I'm going to put that back on top of the fire, just let it cool down slowly with the fire, kind of anneal it. I think it's close enough that we can do the rest of this cold. That's eighth inch sheet metal. You can do quite a bit with that cold at this point, just kind of taking the lumps and bumps out. You're not going to do any major stretching or raising the sides or anything like that. Then we'll take a look at it. If I have to, I'll go back to this, but we'll save that for a little bit later. Our skillet pan has cooled down overnight, so now I'm ready to take a look at it and see what I've got, see if I can do some cleanup cold or if I've got to get it hot again. This Charcoal fire made a huge mess yesterday. There is ash everywhere, and that is one of the downsides to working with charcoal. But I was able to get a fire big enough to do this, and I'm not sure if I would have done that with coal without really smoking up the shop. So this thing definitely has some wrinkles that need to be straightened, and I think we can work on that here. And a lot of this, I really do think we can do cold. This is actually a lot softer because it was able to slow cool sitting on top of that fire. A couple hours later, I came back in the shop. This was still too hot to touch. So it's about as soft as we're going to get it. It will certainly work hard in a little bit, but hopefully by the time I get this into a usable shape, it'll be okay. This is also going to be loud because cold metal rings a lot more than hot metal does. Now this is going to take a lot of back and forth using these different techniques. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. I don't make a lot of skillets. But if you want to see the way Roy does one of these, I will find one of his videos on making his product and link to that right up here and you can take a look at that. But I'm not going to make you watch me mess around with this anymore. So I'm going to finish this and then we'll jump right into making the legs and the handle. Now of course this skillet is not perfectly even all the way around. And to fix that, I'm going to use a silver pencil and a block to set a fixed height and just mark all the way around the rim of the skillet. Then I'm going to take it to the grinder and I'm going to grind parallel with that line. I don't need to go right to the line. I just need to make it the same all the way around the edge of the skillet. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. So with that all ground clean and a whole lot more symmetrical, it's time to go ahead and work on the legs. I have three pieces of quarter by three quarter flat bar. That's what I'm going to use for the legs. I'm not going to do anything very fancy with these. The images of old ones all look like the legs are very plain. So these are just going to be lightly beveled to take the factory finish off the bar, spread out a little bit at the top for a couple of rivets, and upset a little bit at the bottom so it's got a little bit firmer base to sit on.
we'll be able to adjust the angle on these legs a little bit after the whole thing's assembled. This would be a good opportunity to put my touch mark on one of the legs. let the legs cool and get on to making a handle. I just have a piece of quarter by one inch and it's about 13 inches long. Really doesn't matter much. I don't have a firm plan. This, this is just what happened to be out there in the cutoff pile. So that's about six millimeters by 25 millimeters by oh, 330 millimeters, something like that. I'm going to start by isolating some mass at the very end of it that I can spread out as a place to put some rivets. Then I'll taper the handle kind of gracefully up, put a ring on the other end, and I think that's really about all it needs.
I think I'll put a couple of little incised lines on here just for decoration. Okay, I think the time to assemble our skillet project has come. I did take a little bit of time and wire brush the scale out of the skillet pan. This is still really irregular. It will be 100% functional to cook in, at least the way I plan to cook in it. But it's not something I would ever send out to a customer. This would certainly take more practice, some refinement, improvements on my tooling and my technique. But it's completely doable. This is a nice solid blank. There's enough material here that if I wanted to actually grind this and make it perfectly smooth and polished inside, I could do that. But you're looking at a lot of hours of work for that. And for my purposes, I don't really need to do that. So the first thing I want to do is lay out the position for the legs. These need to be equally spaced thirds around the skillet. So I'll mark the first leg and then use a pair of dividers. And by trial and error, I'll get the other two thirds. That wasn't too bad. Now I know where I want my legs to go. And I think drilling with a portable drill in the vise is going to be a little bit more reliable than trying to hold this in the drill press. A three sixteenths by half rivet looks about right. One of these days I need to make some rivet setting tools for that new anvil that'll go a little bit smoother. But right now, this thing's pretty funky. It's a little bit crooked. This leg is the big culprit. That's really easy to fix. So let's get the torch out and let's bend that to a shape I like better. We'll probably also do something with the handle. I'd like it to kick up just a little bit more. A simple bend like this in mild steel gets soft enough well before it gets up to a red heat. That looks a lot better. I think these could maybe come out just a little bit more, the two back legs. The front leg does splay more. 
but not a lot more. So I'm going to mess with that a little bit and do a little more fine adjustment and then I'll put that arch in the handle. Now if you want to cook on a lower heat, you might want to make longer legs. Higher heat, make shorter legs. Of course, you can also control that with the way you build your fire. Now in reality, a spider like this is more likely to have been used in a big fireplace for cooking indoors than over a campfire. But I don't have a big indoor fireplace, and I do enjoy cooking over the campfire. And since we've had a lot of rain so far this spring, I get to do this again. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see a video about making this set of fire irons for hanging pots like your coffee pot, I'll link to that video right up here. You enjoy, we'll see you later.